check out this segment of the Gig Geezer in which I show how I caught another Instacart customer lying, cheating, and committing a fraudulent act. But what did Instacart do? Hey, thanks for checking out this segment of the Gig Geezer. And if you wouldn't mind, hit that subscribe button, give my content a thumbs up, share my content with others, and also I welcome your comments in the section below. And with that, let's get into this segment. The reason why I came up with this segment of the Gig Geezer is because all this occurred yesterday, Thursday, February 17. And it seemed like there was some confirmation about why I should do this based on something I saw on the Daily Dot yesterday evening in which another Instacart driver uploaded on TikTok how she caught a customer committing fraudulent act by lying that, she, that her order was missing. And then the lady confronted her with the actual receipts, pictures of the actual order. Now, what did Instacart do for her? I'll, I'll share that later on. Basically, it's a very basically it's a very similar situation. Driver driver goes to store, get all items as best as as best of their ability. Order is delivered. Driver documents delivery by taking picture. Hits complete delivery. Eventually, then the driver gets a message from the customer claiming that they didn't get their order and then driver hits the ceiling because th they know from experience that this is a customer committing a fraudulent act very similar situation now fortunately for that driver she said instacart validated her claim of fraudulent activity by the customer and the one star rating that was um, given by the customer was removed however instacart as they always will do is nothing whenever the customer decides to take back all or part of the tip now in the gig users case this was a triple stacked order at public i went through the um picking up of items rather fast i was able to find just about everything there were some substitutions there were some re refunds but it was a relatively fast process so after uh paying for the items and loading them up in my vehicle, I noticed that um, the route that Instacart suggested uh, needed to be altered. Now the app doesn't allow me to do that, but because I'd already taken screenshots of the actual addresses, I decided to go to customer C, address first, then customer B, and then customer A. Customer C, lives in an apartment community that is notorious here in the Columbia market for um, residents lying, cheating, and committing fraudulent acts. This, I've personally, I have had a bad history in that the majority of the deliveries that I have made over there, and it hasn't been many in the past six to eight months though, but in my time doing food deliveries, primarily food deliveries we're talking about going back to 2019 the majority of them have always ended up where the customer claims that they didn't receive and or uh, didn't receive their order and or is was missing items well because of that experience upon dropping off the items now as a personal practice what I do I take I text the customer a message through the Instacart app, a picture of the items being delivered at the location, and if I can, I'll catch, I'll capture the apartment number in this particular case, or if it's a residence, the residence um, address, if if it's possible, or some dis discernible, distinct features of that person's place, um, along with the items. Well, upon leaving. I noticed a lady coming out of the apartment and retrieving her items, bringing them inside her place. So I went on. I went on to customer B. Customer B in this particular case was a very generous tipper. This customer tipped me $35 on the app. And then upon placing items in her garage, she gave me an additional $10 cash tip. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then um, 
while on my way to um, delivering to customer A, customer C sends me a message. So, so, um, so the customer sends me a message asking, so the order was delivered and, it, and immediately I'm on alert. I'm on guard. I am suspicious of this person. This could be another case of a customer lying and trying to get over. So I respond, did you not come out of your apartment for your items? I distinctly saw a lady before leaving. And I sent her a copy of the same picture that was text to her through the Instacart app. And I asked her, is that not a apartment 1908? After I asked her, after I asked her, is that not apartment 1908? I then said, as a practice to protect myself from fraudulent customers, I text them a picture of the order's location before marking it as delivered in the app. She then went on and said she's missing an item. And that's where I kind of lost it. I said, I'm reporting you. And I said, that's not going to fly. I'm reporting you. And so we exchanged a couple more. Um, there was a couple more exchanges. And then I said, you will be reported. Now, upon, upon, um, upon delivering to customer A, I went on the Instacart app and got in contact with driver support. I told them that I want to report a fraudulent customer. In that 25 minute exchange, the, the customer support person confirmed that the customer um, did in fact give me a one star and claimed that there was an item missing, noting that there was some chocolate syrup missing. It's a lie. That was a lie. Now, my concern is, as I told them, is that that one star rating should be removed and the claim of a missing item. I was told then by the um, customer support person that, well, I can't, I can't remove the one star, but um, the trust and safety t unit are the people that can do that. And I assure you that they will take care of this. Instacart has in place for us driving, um, being able to um, report fraudulent activity is that we can contact driver support via the app, but they're only the frontline people. They're the ones who supposedly pass on whatever information that we have to have for Instacart. And then supposedly it's then is then handled by the so-called trust and safety unit. Now, per the app, the app says that we can uh, file a response um, in the quality of items section. Now, if you look at the app, you can go down to the bottom and, and tap that star uh, button. From there, you hit quality of items. And then, um, from within there, um, if typically uh, um, when you look in there, when you look in that section, you'll see where a customer um, claims of missing items or damaged items. That is really your only opportunity to respond to anything that is supposedly fraudulent. Okay, so you hit the fraud reported tab on that specific in incident, and then you can t and then you can respond to it. But it says if you have pictures. Now, in most cases, are you taking pictures? of bunches of cilantro or a damaged package of mini cucumbers chances are you're not so you don't really have a chance of of defending yourself on these things um if you were to try to report an actual customer fraud you have to wait for them to claim something on you before you could respond to that that is a one-way process that needs to be remedied now the process is limited at best. And so therefore, um, the drivers really have no voice in this. But this same trust and safety unit is the same one that will send us an email almost within hours or within a day or so from a customer alleging that they did not receive their order or that supposedly items were missing. And in the worst of cases, we might get a phone call from that same unit in which we may be able to explain to them our side of the story. That's at best what happens. But the kicker with that trust and safety unit is that whenever we get that email, it is a no reply 
at Instacart. So meaning that we cannot respond to the email. It will not be responded to. So how do you get to, how do you get to respond? Invariably, you've got to go back through the Instacart app in order to respond. And even then they say, well, we'll pass it on to the trust and safety unit. That's the problem I have with this because the trust and safety unit is, is it the secretive, inaccessible, unapproachable unit? It reminds me of, of when I first started as a licensed insurance agent back in 2001. As a captive agent working as an employee of this company, whenever, whenever under, the underwriters would have something to ask of us or whenever the underwriters would, have, would ask something of us, we had to respond through our sales managers. We did not have any access to the underwriters. So when I, so when I left that insurance company and went on my own as an independent, man, I was surprised when we actually had access to the underwriters. We had direct access to the underwriters. We can call them, ask questions, respond to things or whatever else. That was a whole different new world for me, man. But that's what I think needs to happen with Instacart and perhaps with some of these other companies. Through the exchange, I told the Instacart support person that more than likely what's going to happen is when I look at the app today, February 18, my rating is probably going to drop from 4.71, probably from 4.75 down to 4.71, 4.70. And the gig geezer was right. I'm at 4.70. I have two one stars. Both one stars stem from customers claiming that they did not receive their order. In the other situation, it was a Sam's order. The customer had two items. The first item was some specialty candies during Valentine's Day. And I asked the um, person, the, the, the shift manager, uh, um, the availability of those items he said that they would not be able to put them out for display and for uh for purchases until the until the next day because they just got them and blah 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 i communicated that to the customer i got no response so i marked that item as refunded i went ahead and delivered the flowers as per the customer's instructions but because i was dealing with another apartment community that's notorious for customers claiming that they didn't get all of all their items or missing orders i took another picture outside of the message that i sent that customer well event a couple of days later i got a friendly well-written email from instacart's trust and safety unit uh, advising me of a missing order i contacted dri um, driver support through the app and i sent them the picture that i sent the customer i said uh, does this look like an order that was not delivered? Basically, I got no response. And I'm still waiting for trust and safety to remove that one star. And that's where I'm at. Now, if you notice, in both cases, I'm dealing with apartment communities. Now, it has happened at a residence in my ex delivery experience with Instacart where a customer claimed they didn't get their orders. But typically, it always happens at apartment communities. That is why in many, on most apps, I try to avoid apartment communities if I can, especially apartment communities in which I know that they're troubled. So if on Uber Eats, I see certain addresses or certain cross streets, and I can tell, and I can quickly discern that that's an apartment, I'll avoid it. If I can tell on, on DoorDash, um, where it shows you where the um, drop-off location is likely to be, if I, if, you know, you got like 30 seconds for a single order, and then like a minute and 20 seconds on a double stacked order. So if I can blow up the screen and look close and, and get a pretty good gauge on the map, I'll avoid that order as well, because I don't want to deal with the truck. Here's where we are. So, um, now the other thing about these two specific cases is that both customers either tipped very little or nothing at all. The first customer at the apartment complex in which I delivered only the flowers out of the order, he tipped only $2. This other customer tipped nothing. 
Now, as you know, with gig apps, these companies will try to get, get by with you on a two for one or three for two. Meaning that they'll, they'll stack an order that doesn't pay really and the customer didn't tip with an order where the customer pays and tips. And um, there are ways of getting out of it, but most times um, you don't know until after, but most times you really don't know which customer tipped or not tipped. And if you try to get out of it, the problem is that you may cancel out on the order which the person does tip. My problem, as I mentioned with Instacart, is that there is no process in place to contest these poor ratings. There's really no process in place. There's really no remedy for this. And so the customers are able to do what they do with impunity. They're able to get by with it and nothing happens. And in the case of fraudulent activity, what ends up happening? They, they continue to defraud the app company and they continue to endanger us drivers. So on other apps, ship it of all places has a supposedly a ratings forgiveness process but it's been my experience that they do nothing with it i mean i've got a very poor rating with chip it i've got a 3.2 rating after six deliveries i've had i've had three of the deliveries um have have included a one star two star and three star and in all three cases supposedly customers will give you a poor rating when you have to either substitute or um refund items and you're not and you don't communicate with them about these decisions well i've never been able to communicate with any customer on the ship it app and when i've talked to ship it support they know that's a problem with the app they acknowledge the problem but yet these people who people who review our um, request for ratings forgiveness they turn it down so another another app is Lyft now what I'm talking about dates back to 2017 2018 um, I will say that since March 2020 I've completed only one rideshare ride for both Lyft and Uber but back in 2017 2018 I went through a very bad stretch in which uh, riders were trashing me left and right. And I was on the brink of being deactivated for having a too low of a driver rating. Fortunately for me, I was able to fight those bad ratings and Lyft removed those bad ratings. Now, I don't know if that process is still in place in 2022 i just don't know so if you would comment below and and let the gig user know whether that is st that still exists now then there's uber well if a customer can come up with some 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 bogus claim with you you're stuck with it if the customer gives you a one star for some bogus claim you're stuck with it the only time i was able to refute a customer's claim the only time, but I still got a one star and it stayed on and it stayed um, in my, it stayed there until it was purged off by other ratings was when um, it just so happened. I had an airport ride. This rider was from Florida. He says that he was a, he was a driver as well. And uh, while on the freeway, um, I had an issue with my vehicle and that a brake caliper bolt backed out and I had to pull over and um well th that customer went ahead that rider um got another uber ride and went on but next thing i know i i had no access to the app because uh uber put me on temporary deactivation well i responded to that allegation by ex explaining a bolt had come out well they said we will reactivate you if you can show proof that you have met remedied the problem and so i sent them pictures before where the boat's missing and then i showed pictures of after and i sent them receipt of me purchasing the boat i was reactivated that same that same day so all this occurred all within a span of 24 hours this is my this is really my take on this 
I'm, I start off talking about me catching a customer in the act or actually catching two customers in the act in, in, in this particular case. But I suspect the only way these app companies are going to change their process is if there's a lot of unwanted media attention. I think that's the only way they're going to respond as it pertains to drivers refuting these bogus claims that these customers are empowered to be able to get off with. Because us contacting them and raising hell and raising sand uh, about with them about these things, it goes un it goes unheard, unresolved, and basically unnoticed. Thank you for checking out this segment of the Gig Geezer. If you reach this point, it means that you've checked it out in its entirety and it's very much appreciated and it tells YouTube that you're very much engaged in my content. Hey, if you'd like to get in contact with me or pass on some other useful information, I can be reached at giggeezer 3.5 at gmail.com or you can check me out on Twitter at giggeezer. 